Clayton Christensen, a Harvard professor, wrote a book entitled The Innovator's Dilemma. In his book, he coined the phrase disruptive technologies. These are basically wild, crazy, really radical breakthroughs that really change the landscape about how people think about a product or a service. If you take technopreneurship to its extreme level, you're probably talking about some kind of disruptive technology. A good example of that is the advent of digital photography. Digital photography really changed the whole industry, not only in terms of the photographic equipment, but also in terms of photographic services as well. Now, if you're as old as I am, you will probably remember these Polaroid cameras uh, very well. These were extremely popular 30, 35 years ago, and uh, they produced uh, photographs instantly uh, from uh, the machine itself. Now, when digital photography came along, uh, this really changed the whole nature of the business. Companies like Polaroid actually had to redesign their entire set of products and also basically redesign their business. Uh, this is a version of their latest product. It's basically quite similar in concept to the old Polaroid camera, but you can see the technology behind it is vastly different. So having looked at a few examples of technopreneurship, let's uh, go back and try and pull out some of the key elements here. Firstly, technopreneurship is clearly a creative and innovative process. It involves the transformation of products and services. Secondly, innovative ideas are really contextualized by a vision of what the future might be like with this innovation. Thirdly, technopreneurship is not just about having great technical ideas, it's also about generating meaningful and beneficial business results as a consequence. And finally, technopreneurship involves making calculated risks and depending upon how well these risks are managed, success may be dependent on that. These are the key elements of technopreneurship. Uh, another great example of uh, technopreneurship is the Google Desktop. And uh, for many, many years, of course, uh, Microsoft uh, Windows has dominated the operating system space, uh, uh, particularly uh, with uh, so many PCs uh, and laptops having that as a base operating system. Well, Google has recently come up with its own operating system, the Google Desktop, and basically what it's trying to do is unsurp uh, Microsoft's foothold uh, in the uh, operating systems area. And it's a bold and radical move, but it's also a very good example of uh, being uh, technopreneurial. So, now let me give you an opportunity to exercise some of your technopreneurial talents here. I'm going to give you a few examples of possible technopreneurial ventures and I want you to think about whether or not these will be successful or not. The first idea I have for you is ebooks. Now, Amazon have recently launched the Kindle Reader, uh, where people can buy books online and have them downloaded to their reader. Sony also has recently launched this kind of ebook reader. The question is, how popular will they, will these become? Do you think they will replace the kind of paperback and all the newspapers that we tend to carry around with us? Is this the future? The second technopreneurial idea 
is movie glasses now these are glasses that you wear and it gives you the full cinema effect without actually having to go to the cinema do you think these will take off in the future the third idea uh, which is a real life concept is the General Motors and Segway Puma and this is basically a uh, transportation device uh, obviously smaller than a car uh, larger than a motorcycle uh, it looks like it can carry a passenger or two uh, that's another possible uh, venture there okay now let's have a look at the entrepreneurship process uh, the process generally has a number of different stages the first stage is what I call ideation and that's the creative uh, step where you look at gaps in the marketplace uh, you look at how you can improve products and services uh, you search for new ideas that might have an impact on the world uh, the second step is prototyping and that's where you try and test out the idea you try and create some kind of demo the third process is buy-in uh, in this process you're trying to convince other people about your idea if you're looking for funding uh, you need to convince venture capitalists uh, if you're in a company, uh, you might have to convince your CEO. Uh, you also might need to convince other people, other stakeholders, in order to get buy-in for the idea. Uh, once you've achieved buy-in, the next step is mobilization. That's where you get together the necessary resources to try and develop the idea for real. That might involve hiring a few people, uh, getting some machinery or instruments, uh, get in an office, basically get in set up so that you can develop the idea. Uh, obviously the next step is development. This is where you take the idea from the concept or prototype stage uh, to a level where it can be offered to the marketplace as a real product or service. And finally commercialization. This is where you try and transform uh, the idea into a market success. So there are different distinct stages to the entrepreneurship process. Let's look at the ideation process uh, in a bit more detail. Ideation is the first step in the entrepreneurship process. It's typically a very creative, inspirational process. Now, business schools can teach you the different steps of entrepreneurship and how to structure and process it but really that doesn't mean much unless you have a great idea to start with a good example is how the Sony Walkman came about the story goes that uh, the chairman of Sony actually used a bigger recording device uh, he used it on airplanes but found it was too bulky so he asked his design team to build him something that was a lot smaller and a lot lighter uh, the result of which of course was the Sony Walkman and the rest really is uh, history.